Hi everybody, Cheaply Chic, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today I am jumping back in to my journal for the month of July, which those of you who are part of my channel already know, it's fruit themed, and I've been having a lot of fun creating tags for this journal, but I haven't cracked the journal open yet, so I decided today I really needed to do that. It's really different because of the fact that there's so much color in this journal. It's different. It's, I don't think I've ever done anything like this before, but I think that is super fun. And I'm just excited to get started in it. So like I mentioned in previous videos, I am going to work with the scrapbook paper collection called Summer Farmhouse. It's a paper collection that I picked up during quarantine. I did a little bit of shopping online during quarantine. <laughs> and mostly what I love about this for this particular journal are the fruit papers and the colors. I want to avoid most of the summery theme. I do really like that page because I'm using this for a devotional word study. So... I'm trying to keep it just about the fruit of the spirit, like I've mentioned before. I do like that gingham print. So I'm just going to go through and pull out the papers that I know I would like to use. I don't think I'm going to use that honeycomb. Those flowers are super cute though. But here is what I love. I love that polka dot paper, but of course I love the cherries. I probably have other polka dot paper in my stash. And then there's this watermelon that is unfortunately on the journaling cards. That is a bummer because I like the journaling cards. I don't like to use the paper print on the back. I might look in my stash and see, I have an old watermelon paper pad from Michael's. I might pull that out and see what I can do with that. And then there's some more larger journaling cards. There are some stickers. There's some cute little fruit stickers in here. So I pulled out some paper pads and I actually couldn't find that watermelon paper pad. I didn't look very hard <laughs> outside of my paper stacks. I might have gotten rid of it because honestly I wasn't that fond of it. But I pulled out this old watercolor pad from DCWV and I really liked this paper. There are a couple other fruit pages in here and the colors are really pretty. And then these two paper pads I picked up at Joann's last year and they are beautiful. I love these paper pads. So I know that there are some pages in here I could use. Like I really like gingham prints a lot. <laughs> I've always been a fan of pattern papers and I think I also want to use a lot of recipe type book pages. Well, I say a lot. I'm not sure what that means, but I think I'm going to take out that piece. Maybe this piece because it's so cute. And then this from the garden is also beautiful paper. I love this one. Okay, so for now I'm just going to keep these close by. A lot of times I get started and just create a spread or clusters. Of course, I've already created some tags, but what I think I'm going to do today is go through and cut a bunch of my papers into pockets and tuck spots and I'm going to start that way. Sometimes I feel like moving through the journal and just creating on one page can be a little difficult for me. I definitely struggle with creating on the front page first. Sometimes it, it works out, other times not so much. Because I'm going to be using this for a devotional study, I'm not exactly sure how I want to base how I want to use the journal. Like since I'm studying the fruit of the spirit in it 
And there are nine of those words, by the way, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Nine words and 30 pages. So I'm not certain if I want to break those up, if I just want to move through the journal, if I want to title little sections of the journal. I love it when I have a purpose for a journal like that, but it can be a struggle to know how I want to set it up. So just to give you a general idea, I know that the book pages are about four inches wide and about eight and a half, between eight and a quarter and eight and a half inches tall for the most part. There are fancy little pages, you know, cut at different sizes in here. But it just gives me an idea of how to cut my pockets, which I usually like to keep them at about three and a half inches wide. Um, I like to keep tuck spots at about eight inches at the most, and usually about an inch and a half, inch to an inch and a half inch. Yeah, <laughs> wide, I can't talk. I know that I love this cherry paper, so I'm just going to make a pocket then, three and a half inches wide, and we'll trim some down. Three inches. All right, I feel like that's a good start. I have one piece that I cut for a pocket, like an over the whole page type pocket tuck spot. A couple pockets there, a couple tuck spots here, and then some pieces that I could use on the corners of a page. And you guys, if a fly flies through the video, please excuse me. <laughs> We had been moving some things in and out of the house and there are a couple flies that got in and they are so annoying around the lights, the filming lights. I'm just using some frayed burlap here. And then I think I'm going to give them a faux, well not faux stitched, I'm going to stitch them on the sewing machine and make them look like they're sewn into the book. That's what I'm trying to say. So how is everybody? I hope you're doing well. I hope I'm actually posting this video before August. <laughs> With the way things have been going, goodness, just been pretty busy. But I do expect things to slow down just a little bit. Have some more time to sit in front of the computer. Editing can take a little while. It's the most, I would say, annoying part. Of course, I love the creating part. <laughs> of course. I'm filming this video on Friday. It's a week after the release of this collection. I'm so glad that I finally got to sit and create in it. I finished up the Rooted in Hope journal last week. I actually, as I'm filming this, still need to sit and film a flip through of that, but I like how it turned out. I felt very, I don't know, just like I lost my crafting mojo a little bit. I feel like it's coming back slowly, but surely. <laughs> so I'm just going to take all of these over to the sewing machine. Okay, hopefully this gives me a place where I feel like I can start. I am so in love with these colors. I love playing with color like this. Let's see. I think I'll start here in the center. Usually I don't glue things over this heart paper because I enjoy it so much, but 
that's all right. And I'm just going to glue these down now. Because the book is blank, I actually have and could run it through the sewing machine. I could have just stitched these right on to the book pages. I just fold the book backwards, but that's okay. I know a lot of people don't have a sewing machine, so you wouldn't have to stitch on these. You could just glue them in place. Okay. I had somebody ask me in a recent video, so I'm gonna tell you. Some of you have heard it forever, <laughs> but I'm using Fabri-Tac glue. It's also called Fabri-Fix glue at some places. It just depends where it's sold. It's by Beacon and it's for fabric. I know there's some other brands like it. I like using this in my journals because it's acetone based instead of water based, which means that when you glue it on your paper and it dries, it doesn't give it that wrinkly effect like a regular glue would. And that is what I love about it. My tuck spots are a little off from each other, but that's okay. It is also acid free. It says right here on the glue. So for archival purposes, it still works pretty great. There are a lot of fun, colorful things in this collection. I want to pull out my little hearts. I'm going to use them on my center strings. Hopefully I didn't lose one. Oh, there it is. while talking about glues <laughs> because I'm gluing these really tiny little hearts onto the string I also do like this art glitter glue I wouldn't necessarily glue an entire giant page down with it or anything just because of that water-based aspect but it is a great glue it's my second favorite glue and I definitely like the skinny nozzle It helps me with tiny little things. It also works great for gluing down fabrics and laces because it dries clear. So yes, I am using the yellow parts of these hearts because I like that contrast of those colors. I actually need to clean this nozzle out. I've been having a hard time getting the glue to flow. I have heard that that glue goes bad after a while, so I'm wondering if maybe that's part of my issue. I don't know. All right, I do apologize, but I had to cut that previous video off and I had some stuff that I had to deal with. I received a phone call in the middle of filming that video that kind of changed the dynamics of my past 24 hours. <laughs> so it's a entire day since I was filming right where you left off and I'm not, I kind of kept working at adding those pockets to the journal. So let me just show you what I've done here and catch you up to speed. I'm not sure where I left off. I did add this yellow pocket here. I love that punch of color mixed in there. I love how this cherry paper has that same tone as that green paper there. I added one of those corner tucks there. And on this side, again, loving that green paper. And then I added a little lemon pocket on that music paper again liking the fact that that pink is peeking through on that brown paper. And I added 
these two little gingham tuck spots here. I know I did the hearts on camera. I probably did that on camera too. Jumping ahead a little bit. I know there's some things in the back. I added this lemon pocket here in the back. I like that green with that pink. I've mentioned it before, but sometimes I will jump around and do something in the front, like I did this pocket here in the front, and then toward the back, I did another one. And sometimes I work that way, like from the outside in, and I just hop around and add some pockets here and there until I feel like I have, you know, adequate pockets, I guess. So then I have this yellow gingham one here, and I like that you can see that little touch of yellow on the outside. So that's where I'm at right now. I do think I'm going to switch gears a little bit here and I'm going to create something out of the collection. I'm going to make an envelope. I really want to make an envelope and then I'm going to move on, finish the journal and share a flip through. That's what I'm just going to have to do. So this is one of the book pages that I received in the collection. I love it. This actually, this is a King Begonia, but it really reminds me of my coleus plant that I have outside. I don't know, maybe it's not a coleus plant. And then the scrapbook paper, or not scrapbook paper, the wallpaper. All right, I changed my mind. I'm going to use this recipe book page and the wallpaper and I'm going to make an envelope and then I'll actually have some left over too. I'm gonna start by trimming down my book page a little bit. And that is pretty close there. So I'm going to start by just gluing this in place and see what happens. I've never really glued paper to the back of wallpaper, but I don't see why it shouldn't work. I also only glued in the center because I know I will be sewing my envelope. And I'm just going to straighten up my edges here a little bit. I guess it's that simple, huh? I'm just going to run that through the sewing machine really quick. Okay, and I think I might make either a tuck spot or a tag with the other part of that. So I'm going to hold on to that for a while. Pull out some of this stuff. I love this yellow bag. I love these CD, mini CD cases. I always say it, there's so much to play with here. All right, I think I'm going to put it here. It's kind of hard to figure out what color I want where, but it's definitely fun and different. I think I'm just going to fold the bag and make a tuck out of it. Okay, so I just ran that edge through the sewing machine and I'm trying to decide if I wanna make it, I don't think I'm going to make, well, why not? Decisions, decisions, I'm gonna make a tuck out of it. I'm going to try anyway to just glue down the bottom 
and the top and I can glue there because nothing is sliding in there. And then hold that there for a minute. And I feel like once I get a tag in this pocket, it won't be so floppy because it's closed in there. Okay, so now I have a tuck spot in here and I have that little bag in there. So I hate to cut this video short. I feel like I haven't, other than creating all of the tags I created, I haven't really shared a lot in the process of this journal. But some things have come up for me that I know I need to process through and deal with here in my personal world. So I am going to finish this journal on my own. And by the time you're seeing this video, you should get a final flip through pretty quickly. But I do plan on making, you know, some more fun envelopes. I have all these little gingham and fruit prints. And then I have my fun tags, which are really going to add a lot to this journal once I, you know, find out what I want where. I just think going to be a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it as basic as it was. And yeah, stay tuned for the next one, seeing the final flip through. And by the time this video posts, we're probably getting close to the August collection, which I'm super excited about too. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.